the core of um, nature, of process in nature, is at the end motion. Everything moves, everything interacts. With our simulation we can try and shed light on, on, on how uh, something works. We can simulate the molecules, how they move, and therefore we can see the whole motion and not just an average value. Physics tells us that atoms interact with each other. Once we know the force that acts on a certain atom, we can predict the motion of this within a certain a very tiny time step. One can view this as a, as a computational microscope. So we can get insights into processes that are not available um, from experiment. Hi from me too. Welcome to the seminar talk here. The work that we are doing is really interdisciplinary. So having a team where everybody brings in his or her own experience and her background, having physicists and chemists and computer scientists talking together in order to create these tools that we then can apply to study systems. This is really the key to success. So what you now try to do is maybe let's start simple. We look at um, chemical systems. We use computational um, means, computational tools, algorithms to describe these chemical systems. Cyclic peptides are interesting because uh, they are often found as natural products. They're um, generated uh, by bacteria and by fungi uh, to defend themselves. And uh, humans have uh, used this ability of these molecules then as antibiotics. The final goal of the simulations is that we increased our understanding of a biological system. That means we want to be able to use this understanding to make then predictions um, how it may behave depending on a certain change. We want to find um, the, the reason why certain classes of such uh, cyclic peptides would go through uh, the cell membrane. So that's very interesting because in order for these to act as a drug candidate, they really need to go through the cell membrane. What I'm currently um, trying to focus on is... Uh, we develop fundamental methods for molecular dynamic simulations. We can apply them to a system like a peptide where we have around 1,000 atoms. But now uh, in biology, of course, many molecules are much bigger and we are interested to also understand these. So we want to be able to study large proteins or protein complexes even. The main challenge with this project is the size and the many degrees of freedom. So we have not only the protein that moves, but we have now each of these sugars that move on top. And these sugars are extremely important for the biological functions. And now again, we can come with the simulations, we can study the motion of both the sugars in connection with the protein, and therefore see how the sugars influence the flexibility of the protein. The relevance of these sugar units in the cell really is they signal where the pro whether the protein is folded correctly and where the protein is also supposed to be utilized in our uh, body. It's really just the drive to try and understand. So you, you have these biological systems and no one knows how a certain function comes about. With our simulation we can try and shed light on, on, on how uh, something works. Our long time goal is the accurate description of the motion of molecules. Because when we have this ability to describe it, then it also means that we can control it. And through this control, we will have a handle uh, to cure diseases.